Nag-record na ba? Nag-person nyo? Nag-start na? Napa naman. Ayan, nag-record na pala. Ayan na. Nag-record na. Go. Okay na ba? Ah, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, hi, we are here to present the uh, syntactic environment of relative that we came up with and to present the sample sentences to as proof of the syntactic environment provided. So aside from presenting the syntactic environments that we've made, we're gonna also briefly discuss about the relative clause definition, relative pronouns, relative adverbs, and also yeah, the presented syntactic environment. So first of all, what is a relative pronoun, Louisa? A relative pronoun is a word that introduces a dependent or relative clause and connects it to an independent clause. A clause beginning with a relative pronoun is posed to answer questions such as which one, how many, or what kind, who, whom, what, which, and that are all relative pronouns. So inserted here is the use of proper pronoun. Um, what, number one is who. It's used as, as a sub substitute for subject nouns, pronouns such as he, she, we, and they. And next is whom. It uses as a substitute for object nouns, pronouns such as him, her, her, and them. And next is whose. And it uses as a substitute for possessive nouns, pronouns such as his, hers, ours, and theirs. And next is that. It can be used for another subject or object that can only be used in restrictive relative clauses. And next is which can be used for other subject or object that can be used in non-restrictive relative clause that can also be used in restrictive relative clauses, though some people don't like this use. So relative clause. Mia. Yeah. Mia. Yeah. Mia. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, relative clause is one kind of dependent clause. It has a subject and verb, but can stand alone as, as a sentence. So, it is sometimes called as an adjective clause because it functions like an adjective and it gives more information about the noun. So, yeah, it's yours. Oh, now, uh, we have provided three syntactic environment when using pronominal relatives. The first one is the syntactic environment of a subject relative clause. And in here we can see that it is relative is equal to the antecedent uh, relative verb and object. The antecedent here is realized by a noun noun phrase or a pronoun, and it is also part of the main clause. Then the relative clause is made up of the relative pronoun, which is enclosed in the square bracket, and then the verb and the object. And the relative pronoun here is substituting the subject of the relative clause. So it's, the, it's called the subject relative clause. And then the second one is the object relative clause. Same is true with the first one. The antecedent here is realized by a noun, noun phrase, so a pronoun, uh, and then followed by the relative clause, um, the subject and the verb. The relative here is uh, substituting the object. And then the third one is the object relative clause with preposition. The preposition here is not should not be in close in round bracket. I'm sorry, that's a typo. So we have here the antecedent, which is also the same. Uh, it's, it's a noun. 
it's a noun phrase or a pronoun. Then comes the preposition, and then the relative, uh, the subject, and the verb, and the preposition. The preposition here appears on two positions, which is uh, before the relative pronoun and at the end of the relative clause, meaning that it can be placed uh, as what was, was what has been said, it can be placed before the relative pronoun or at the end of the relative clause. The relative stands for the object. Next slide, please. Okay. So these are the sample sentences to prove the syntactic environment provided. For the subject relative clause, we have sentence number one, the person that will do the job perfectly is here. The person is the antecedent. Uh, it's also the noun phrase. That will do the job perfectly is the relative clause. Um, the person is here is the main clause. Okay, that will do the job perfectly is the relative clause or it is the subordinate clause or also called um, an adjectival clause because it is modifying the antecedent or the person. Okay, that is the relative pronoun. Um, it also stands as the subject of the relative clause. Will do is the verb of the relative clause. The job is the object of the verb. That will do the job perfectly is modifying the person. Yeah. The sample sentence for object relative clause. The man who I adore is from my hometown. We have here the man from my hometown. That's the main clause. The man is the antecedent. It's a noun phrase. Who I adore is the relative clause. Who is the uh, relative pronoun. It also stands as the object of the verb adore. I is the subject of the relative clause and adore is the verb of the relative clause. Who I adore is modifying the man. Okay, for object, relative clause with preposition. The first one is, um, she is the author that the committee gave an award to. So she is the author, uh, the author is the antecedent, it's a noun phrase, that the committee gave an award to is the relative clause. That is the relative pronoun, which, is also, which also stands for the author, and it also stands for the object of the preposition to. The committee, the subject of relative clause, gave an award is the verb phrase, and to is the preposition. And it appears af uh, after the relative pronoun that. So um, as what has been provided in the uh, uh, syntactic environment a while ago, to is, I mean, the preposition can appear uh, before the relative pronoun or at the end of the relative clause. And what is being shown in here is that the preposition is appearing after the, I mean, at the end of the relative clause. And then for number two, she's the author to whom the committee gave an award. She's the author, is the antecedent. Again, it's the author is a noun phrase. Um, to whom the committee gave an award is a relative clause, the relative clause. Two appears before whom, that, that, that is the preposition. And then whom is the relative pronoun. The committee is the subject of relative clause and gave an award is the verb phrase. To whom the committee gave an award is modifying the author. So now let's proceed to relative adverbs. <clears throat> what is relative adverb? So. Relative adverbs, which is when, where, and why, used to connect the subordinate clause to the main part of the sentence. Like the relative pronouns, they are joining words. If, um, if relative pronouns can replace noun and pronoun, relative adverbs is to replace adverb to form a relative clause. Here now comes the relative adverb of time, place, and reason. So when you're going to replace time, place, and reason, you will use when, where, and why. Next. So the syntactic environment that we've made on this one is the first one is the main clause as the antecedent of the relative verb. And the next, I mean, the clause that is after the relative adverb is um, necessary to complete the sentence. So also, the job of this adverbial 
I, I mean relative adverb is to replace an adverbial clause within the sentence. So what is adverbial, adverbial clause, you may ask. So for example, we met on, the, on this day. So we is the subject, met is the verb, and on this day is the adverbial clause for time. And the next one, they went to the school. So they is the subject, went is the verb, and to the school is the adverbial clause for place. I eat because I am hungry. So I is stands for the subject, eat is for the verb, and because I am hungry is the adverbial clause for reason. So to further understand the um, the environment that we've we've created, so these are the examples. Now let's proceed to the complex examples of um, relative adverb. Sentence number one. The picture was taken in the park. I used to play in the park. Um, now we want to use relative plus to give extra information about the park. So in the park will be replaced by the relative adverb where. Yeah. So where is the one that is enclosed in the, in the bracket. Uh, and if we combine these two sentences, which is where I used to play, it is now the relative clause we put in the right. We put it right after the word park because we want to give extra information about the park. So the final sentence will become the picture was taken in the park where I used to play. So the relative adverb used here is where. So another example. It is now the example of relative, um, relative adverb of time. So. The sentence says, I remember the day we first met on the day. So we will make the second sentence into a relative clause. So we're going to replace the adverbial clause on the day with the relative adverb of time, which is when. And so yun naka enclose sa a bracket. So um, the final sentence will be, I remember the day when we first met. So the relative adverb here is when, which is used to replace the relative clause for time. So another example. Yeah. So we will now use um, the relative clause for reason. So the sentence is, tell me the reason you came home late for a reason. And so the adverbial clause for the reason is why. So we are going to replace the clause for, for a reason. It will now become to why. We are giving extra information about the reason, uh, which is what reason. So the reason why came home late. So we're going to use um, the adverb, the relative adverb why to replace the adverbial clause of the reason. And so yun yung naka bracket ulit yung why. So it, the sentence will become, tell me the reason why you came home late. And so that's all for the examples. And take note, if you are um, replacing relative clause to relative adverbs, to use always the relative adverbs where, when, and why, when you are transform when you are transforming the sentences of time, place, and reason. So that's all for.